Hello, Double O Crew. Welcome to Obsession Outdoors. Today we got a very interesting episode here. We're gonna be doing, as you can see from the title, an apocalyptic survival video. So, obviously, it's not gonna be your average, you know, I'm lost in the woods with nothing, I'm trying to survive video. This is gonna be post apocalyptic. So, you know, just use your, use your imagination. And it's pretty much gonna be whatever you wanna make it. So, I don't know, did, did the world collapse and fall on itself because of politics or COVID or some other crazy disease? World war, who knows? Use your imagination. So, whatever happened, happened. You got a little encampment. I'm out here by myself today because, you know, the babies and Masturbator and TRK are back at the camp holding it down. They're, uh, you know, keeping the family safe and everything. I'm out here, I gotta get us some food. So naturally, you know, I'm not a true survivalist without a fishing rod. I mean, hello. Even if I was gonna be out in the wilderness somewhere, I'd always probably have a fishing rod with me. So those videos don't really apply unless there's some kind of crazy circumstance where you're stranded without anything somehow. But again, anytime I'm out in an area like that, I'm never gonna be out there unless I'm fishing or hunting. So I'm gonna have some type of survival stuff with me, but obviously that doesn't apply to everybody, you know? So for this situation, for this video, I got my gear. Cause you know, I'm out here trying to forge and survive. Obviously ignore all the vehicles in the background cause they don't exist. I have to find some bait because there's no bait shops open. The end of the freaking world. Then catch some fish and possibly find some type of wild edibles. I don't know a whole lot about wild edibles, but I do know some, enough to keep me alive. So, take this journey with me. Hopefully, we can find some, catch some food, and uh, yeah, show you guys how to survive in an apocalyptic situation. Put him in with this worm. Look at that, guys. Big old coyote print in the mud. Much too big to be a fox print. The size of it next to my hand. Definitely too big to be a fox. That's a coyote. Ah, beautiful pond out here. This should make for some good sustenance and water. You can get the water because it's fresh, clean, crystal clear water. Boil it, get all the bacteria and stuff out of it and eat it. Eat it, drink it. There was also a, you guys know I love herping and everything and I love and respect all wildlife, but there was a garter snake back there that got away. I let him get away because I wasn't really interested in catching him at the moment, but if this was survival times for real, believe me, he would have been a catch because that's food. Just like all those turtles out there right now on that log, they'd be food too. Anything to help you and your family survive. And boy, I love turtle soup. There's something called a cattail and that is a highly versatile edible plant that grows almost everywhere and it has a look-alike that is toxic and this is the look-alike see right there is your traditional i'll just get close and show you it's your traditional uh you know what people recognize as a cattail right well this is not a cattail this is called an iris and it is toxic if you eat it but it looks very similar to a cattail. I know it's an iris because one, they sprout these beautiful flowers. Two, see how it kind of fans out? Cattail is not gonna fan out like that. It's not gonna be all flat. Down here at the root and the stem, it's gonna be rounded, not flat and elongated like that. So, we are gonna try to find some ca actual cattails around here though, there might be some because they generally grow where irises grow and vice versa. So we'll keep an eye out for some cattails. Oh guys, that's a pretty eerie feeling. Right over to my left, there's a coyote howling. I don't know why, because it's broad daylight. Hear that? I don't know if the GoPro picked that up, but there's a coyote like right over there. It's pretty creepy. Uh. Got stung by something on here too. Not pleasant. But that's the bugger that just stung me. Really pretty looking caterpillar, but 
I brushed the underside of my arm against those things, the brown things that are sticking up. And boy, is my arm on fire right now. I'm gonna harvest this cattail real quick that's in the middle of all this iris. So to harvest the cattail, it's pretty simple. I mean, you can eat almost every part of the cattail, but that, that's an entire video's worth of footage on itself. So I'm gonna show you real quick just how to get the root, or the not the root, the shoot. It, that's the part that connects uh, to the root and kind of stems the whole plant. So at the very base of the plant where it connects to the ground, you dig about an inch or two underneath the mud, um, and you get down as far as you can reach and kind of snap it off pull twist turn and it'll pop out and then there'll be about that much of it maybe five to ten inches on younger ones on older ones maybe three four five six inches at the very most probably less on the older ones of white shoot and that's what you're looking for you're not looking for anything green so i'll pull it out and show you what to do with that once you get it so just so you guys can see the clear difference this is an iris big fan not circular in the middle, it's just all kind of layers on each other. This is a cattail right next to it. Got a big circle stem and all the pieces wrap around it. Like that. It's not flat, it's circle. So anyway, what you're gonna do is, like I said, you're gonna get down in here as far as you can. Pull it out. Like that. Then you're gonna peel away at all this and break it off. Throw it up there for now. Get out of here and show you guys what I'm talking about. Like I said guys, in general it might be hard to tell, but when you have them right next to each other, it's pretty easy. So, you're just gonna get down to the base of it and peel all the layers away until there are no more layers to peel away. So you'll be down just to this, the shoot, <clears throat> down here at the end. So this is the part you want to eat, the nice white spot there. And see how this is kind of uh, spongy, it's porous, it's got like little foamy material to it. In here, there's none of that, it's just a solid little piece, kind of tastes like cucumber a little bit. Alright guys, well I don't know if you can see all these ripples, but there are fish jumping everywhere and the reason is right now there's some kind of dragonfly hatch going on there are literally hundreds of dragonflies i don't think the gopro is picking them up but they're everywhere and they're hitting the top of the water and all these fish are coming up and literally diving out of the water to catch them so i noticed i was going to use live bait first but being a fisherman <laughs> i can't deny this opportunity because you don't see stuff like this very often i'm going to throw in a top water lure and get some top water action and hopefully we'll hook into a bass that's big enough to keep legally or whatever is breaking out here i'm not sure i'm guessing it's bass uh obviously apocalypse times would be different because we wouldn't have to worry about legal sizes but considering we're using our imaginations we do actually have to abide by the law and 12 inches is the legal size to keep bass this time of year so hopefully we can hook one big enough to eat if not we'll use our bait over in the shady spots for some big bluegills or something i guess realistically this is still a pretty good survival tip because you want to mash the hatch to have your best chances of catching fish. And right now, all the fish are going for top water, even though it's bright, sunny bluebird skies on a clear day in the middle of the summer, which is very strange. <clears throat> but uh, that's what they're doing right now. So you do whatever is best to increase your chances of catching fish and you match the hatch. That's how you're going to catch them. I mean, I guess theoretically I could use my worm too and just drag it across the top, but kind of hard to do that without a fly rod so given how light it is I'm gonna use this little top water mini popper here too bad I don't have an actual dragonfly lure I'm gonna go with this see what I can do all right as you guys can see something nice just broke right here there's fish all over the place right there just jumped I don't know if the GoPro got that or not but anyway I'm gonna see if the bottom allows me to walk out a little bit and if not i'm hoping i can cast far enough with this light lure hopefully the bottom will hold and isn't sinky mud and i'll be all right i always want to test before you just walk right out in because you don't want to sink and get stuck especially when you're by yourself it feels like i'm gonna be good there's a lot of vegetation in here and i really don't need to go much farther than i am now yeah it's pretty sandy rocky bottom actually I thought it was going to be muddy. 
underneath there's about a foot or two foot of vegetation that I'm assuming these bass or whatever these are, are hiding in and then they're coming up and hitting the dragonflies or whatever as they land on the water so like I said I'm gonna take advantage of this see what I can do ideally you want to in this situation have your uh, cooking set up ready that way if you don't have ice or anything to hold your fish on you can catch your fish and cook it immediately so it doesn't go bad in the heat but I don't have that set up right now so I guess the first few things unless it's something really nice just jumped right there first few things I'm just gonna kind of throw back maybe not we'll see depending on if it's something really nice or not we might just cook a fire real quick or cook make a fire real quick and cook depending on what I catch here if I can catch anything hard to cast in this stuff fish on top water strike baby what do we got <laughs> little large mouth all right definitely too small to <laughs> definitely too small to eat in survival situation it wouldn't be but definitely too small to keep legally considering our situation but yeah nice little topwater bass bluebird skies midsummer that is not something you can do very often so like I said I'm gonna take advantage of this while it's happening kind of cut into our survival video a little bit have some fun and then we'll get back to it <laughs> it's hard to cast with any distance on this thing oh dang as soon as it hit the top of the water he zoomed over <laughs> this is amazing <laughs> crazy that's actually not a bad fish <laughs> little palm bass all right whoa he's an air tiger not quite 12 inches but still beautiful little bass there <laughs> see ya that is amazing i watched the uh the wake he came over and zoomed on it another one just broke right there let's see if we can get him ah oh, no wrapped around the tip of my rod there we go This is actually a fly lure that I have. It's a, another one. No, he got off. Oh my God, this is crazy. <laughs> this is actually a fly, uh, for a fly rod. So it's pretty light to be casting around with a spinning setup, but. Oh my God. Ah, I think I set the hook too quick. That is insane. I watched him again. You can see the wake. He, they zoom over to it so fast. They leave a wake when as soon as it hits the water. Oh my, did you see that blow up? Come on. Why am I missing him now? Okay, 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 okay. Calm down, calm down, calm down. This is insane. This is insane. Survival video turns into an epic day of topwater fishing. Oh my god, again, as soon as it hit, I must have casted it right on his head. Did you just see that? Did you just see that, guys? Oh my god, this is crazy! <laughs> Woo! Yes! <laughs> this is some of the most amazing fishing I've ever done, ever. The, he's pushing 12 inches. I'm gonna have to get a measurement on him. That is nuts. We'll throw him back, we'll throw him back. I, I'm confident that we can catch bluegill or something to keep and eat with our, uh, man, he choked it. With our uh, worm and couple grubs that we got. But look at that. Breaking all over this whole pond. There's bass exploding everywhere. This is crazy. All right, more fish breaking right in front of me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gonna keep casting to where they're breaking. Cast to where they're breaking and I should be good. There he is, got him. 
<laughs> this is insane. Watch them come up to where you know where they're at. These are small fish considering, but this is the, I would rather catch 10, 20 small fish like this than catch one giant any day. This is freaking amazing. Swing him in. Fatty too. Fatty, fatty, fatty. Man. See ya. The family would be eating real good if uh, this was survival times for real. Man, if I had a smaller... Jeez. I don't know if the GoPro picked that one up, but that bass just jumped again. Completely out of the water over there. Like three feet. Going at diving after those dragonflies. Well, I know from the last time that I was here that that end is just as shallow as this is. So what I'm gonna do is just wade all the way out in the middle of this pond, around to the end. Get over to the hole that I was planning on fishing for those bluegills. Holy crap, that bass just jumps clean out of the water right in front of me. Okay, I should be able to catch this one. Ah, the wind took it to the left. Come on. That scared me. <laughs> oh, something just had it. Right, let me try that again. Perfect cast, no wind that time. Got him! Yes! Swing him in. This one's gonna be 12 inches. Oh yeah. He's 12 inches. Hello. Oh, here's an amazing find. Oh yeah. Whoo. Okay. <clears throat> so what we have here it looks like blackberries. Oh yeah. Berries are tricky guys because there are so many look-alikes. So many mimics, one will kill you and one will be perfectly fine. Not literally, well, sometimes literally. But uh, the point is, anything red, anything you're not sure of, period, never eat. And if you're, unless you're 100% sure. And if you're in a survival situation, you always wanna test things in super small quantities. Like you would pick like off of this whole berry, you would pick like one of these little beads off of it and eat like half of it just to see if it makes your uh, makes yourself sick if you feel extremely nauseous, pain, um, even allergic reactions to some plants and stuff. You always want to try everything little by little, very slowly, to see if it's going to affect you in a negative way. Um, as far as these go, though, these look like blackberries. Let me see. Yes, these are blackberries. Whew. Reason I know is because inside there's a little stem right so you have black raspberries too that look just like normal red raspberries or black raspberries but they're hollowed out inside because this one has a little stem this is an actual blackberry the red ones are just unripe blackberries so that's the difference between the two but the good thing about any type of blackberry like this the ones with all the little dots like all the little separate berries each there are no look-alikes there's only the blackberry and the black raspberry and both of them are fine to eat so you don't have to worry about any uh, problems. So what I like to do, inspect it for bugs. Is I just don't want to eat a bug, you know? I mean, obviously it's best to wash it off, but there's no like pesticides or anything out here in the complete wild. So we're good to go. Super sweet, super good. Mm. That's a fire ant. Don't want to eat him. Again. Good little treat here. These bushes are loaded. GoPro, obviously don't pick it up, but there's blackberries all through here. So if I wanted to, in this situation, just like that cattail back there, I could have harvested all the cattails I found over there, harvest all these blackberries, catch a couple fish, and bam, you know, you're good to go. You can uh, make a meal off of that. I could have a bag, fill the whole bag up with cattail shoots, roots. I mean, there's, like I said, there's tons of that piece of cattail that you can eat i mean you can practically eat the whole thing i mean uh, again though that's a whole video in itself to show but 
you can harvest in all those cattails, harvest as much of these berries as you want, and these fish, and you got yourself a good, well-rounded meal right there. So, yeah. <laughs> Let's try to uh, catch a fish, cook it. This video will be over. It'd be cool to catch like a giant bluegill on the top. Big bluegill. <laughs> oh my god, this is fun. Sight fishing. At its finest. That's a nice bluegill. That's food right there. That is a monster gill. Monster bluegill. Heck yes. Alright guys, we got our food. I'm gonna fun fish for a little while and then we're gonna cookie cook this bluegill in his bass. I mean, look at that thing. That is just amazing trout bait. Put a little split shot on that and drift it down a stream. Catch a big old brown. Whew, all right. Hopefully, it'll be something super nice. Big bluegill, big bass, fish on. Yeah, big bluegill. All right. Dang, another monster. A couple bass chasing him. Look at that. Hopefully you guys can see him. I don't know if you can. Right next to the bluegill, the bass are just... <laughs> I'm trying to stay still and quiet so they don't spook. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. There's like a two and a half pounder going after him right now. And then there's a... Like just at about two pounds maybe. That's crazy. But man, that is a monster bluegill. Jeez. Holy crap. That might be my PB bluegill, honestly. And that's a tank. Heck yes. But you, it is your lucky day, Mr. Bull. See ya. Alright, that's it for the live bait. I'm gonna switch to a little lure, try to catch one of these bigger bass. It's not bad castability at all. Got him. There's a bigger bass. <laughs> he ain't giant, but man, he's nice. But a two pounder. Oh, get out of the grass. There he is. Woo. Man, he's fighting hard. <laughs> he might be closer to three. Heck yes. This would have been the one to eat, but I already got one, so I'll let him go. Keep the smaller ones, let the bigger ones get bigger. Beautiful. All right, all right, all right, all right. Ah, easy there. Hook just came out. Perfect. That's a gorgeous fish there. He's about two pounds, two and a half. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. A lot of people don't eat bass, but you get two nice fillets off him. Survival. That, that's, that'll sustain you for the entire day. You don't need to eat anything else. All right. Thank you for the catch and see ya. Guys, that was just on this little minnow imitation. Nothing like a wacky rigged worm in a pond with bass. Generally, it's not long before you catch a fish. I'm trying to get right up over there against that brush. Perfect. See if there's anybody hiding in there. Mm -hmm. Nice fish. Ha <laughs> ha. I seen him come up and swirl on it. Another nice bass. <laughs> oh man, oh man. That is fun. He's not fighting quite as hard as the last one. Well, maybe I spoke too soon. Same size though. Ah, he's in the thick stuff. There he is. Out of the grass, no, out of the grass. There he is. No! Okay. 
Swing me. Man, this one's fat. I'm not really swinging them in either. We're kind of sliding them in. Easy, easy, easy. I don't want my hook to pop out my finger. All right, I'm gonna scrap you by the gills. Whew. There's a chunky one. Whew, that is fun. Man, can't beat that at all. See ya. Let's go cook us some food. Super simple, super easy. Like I said, generally, if the situation was real, I'd be just taking all this back to our camp or whatever. But because we're here, I brought a little frying pan with me, some butter, salt, and pepper. Just give it a little taste, you know? We got our two fish right there. Our most important thing to worry about here is safety. So, especially since we're not actually in an apocalypse, you always want to be safe. We have very dry conditions right now. It hasn't rained much. There's no way I'm gonna risk starting a fire over on the land. So I'm gonna take advantage of this little island out here, make my little fire on this rock, and then that'll be enough just to cook these fillets real quick. I'm not going to use like wood and all that obviously, because for one, I'm sure if any of you are even interested in this, you know how, or it's easy to find out how to start a fire with wood, or you could request it and I can make a video of that too. But uh, either way, this is what we got for now. So we're gonna fillet these fish real quick, cook them, eat them, and get on out of here. Given that this is surrounded completely by water, there's nothing that can go wrong. No way for this fire to get out of control and spread. Let's do it. A couple quick fillets off these. Since I have a frying pan, I'm gonna just do uh, no skin or anything. I'm actually gonna use this rock to fillet this as best I can off of this skin. The rock's already pretty hot from sitting in the sun, so that helps. Again, this is not a fillet knife, so bear with me here. I did bring some fresh water also to rinse these fillets in case they get dirty, because I don't, again, not actual survival situation here. I'm not trying to eat a bunch of dirt. What the poof? How do I stop it? You're splashing mud everywhere. Jeez, get a hold of yourself. All right, skin off. Toss that, something will come along and eat it. the stomach section out of here all right it's one fillet ready again I'm just gonna sit it on the rock for now because I have fresh clean water that I'm going to rinse this with anyway as you guys can see also as a side note for all you who are against eating largemouth and think they're just a sports fish these things have beautiful flaky white meat and they taste amazing do the same thing with this bluegill rinse our meat and start cooking all right, so first I'm gonna rinse my pan out here. Any stuff that might have fell in it or got splashed in it through all that. Next, I'm gonna put my butter mix in. Squeeze it all out. All right, that's in. Cover the bottom with that. Just butter, salt, and pepper. Clean fillets will go right in. No junk on it. Pick any excess off with your fingers to conserve water. Make sure there's no flatworm larva, anything like that. Do that to the other fillets also. Then all you gotta do left is start your fire and cook. Ah, rinse the water off my hands. Drink some water. Ah, all right, make this fire. Burns up to 18 minutes, just light the wrapper. So, I'm literally just gonna light this whole thing. That should give me a nice, warm, hot fire for this fish. Mix all the seasoning. All right, 
we got flame. We are cooking, boys. Man, we got some strong flames here. Listen to that. Ah. One thing I didn't bring was any type of utensil to flip this fish with. Try to flip these smaller pieces too, same way. Flipped and good to go. You know it's about done when it turns completely snow white like that. And it gets nice and flaky. And start curling in. Yep, we're ready to eat. All right guys, since we're done here, first things first, again, safety overall. Just gonna take our nice sizzly fish here off. Put this fire out. Completely drown it. All right, I'll pick up all that trash and put it in my bag. Never litter, never, ever, ever litter. Now we got our fish here, it's still super hot, so what we're gonna do is put the pan in the water. Cooled it off. Very carefully not to get any of this nasty water on your nice clean fish. All right, pan's cooled off. Bon appetit, now we can eat. Try this bluegill. Okay, <laughs> reroute. Let's give it a couple minutes to cool down. All right, got everything cleaned up. Should be cool enough to eat now. Yep, nice and flaky. That is amazing. Oh my God. That's actually better than what I cook at home. Man. Maybe I'm gonna just start simplifying my recipes. That is insanely good. Let's try this bass. Mmm. For you guys who are against eating bass, look at that. Nice, flaky, boneless white meat. Mmm, mmm, mmm. That is so freaking good. This is amazing. Oh, so now I'm going to rinse out pan as best I can, rinse it off, rinse it out. That way I can go back in my bag and not get everything all buttery. And yeah, that's that. So guys, hope you enjoyed. I know I definitely did. Till next time, get out there and enjoy the outdoors. Peace.